Hey, heathens! A while back I did a video where I talked about classification of animals and these, this idea of kind that people like to use when they're defending the Bible um, and evolution and, and that sort of thing. They, they go in this idea that you know different kinds of animals can, um, can produce other kinds of animals that are the same, but not different kinds of animal. So let's first start by breaking down what kind even means, as we did the last time. Are we talking about a species? Are we talking about a genus? Are we talking about a family or an order, phylum, kingdom? I mean, you, you tell me, what exactly are we talking about in the scientific classification that a kind is supposed to be equal to? I presented that last time, and, you know, take that argument as you may. Maybe some, some of you uh, non-evolution believers just simply... We're getting it. So we're going to do this a little different way this time. Let's start with the dog. We understand that the dog was um, selectively bred from wolves. The reason why we know this happened is because <laughs> we did it. Human beings have bred dogs to become the breeds that they wanted them to be for many, many years. Uh, as a matter of fact, longer than the 6,000 years that some creationists think that the world is. And we know that, but, you know, whatever. Well, seeing as how dogs come from wolves, I'm having a hard time understanding why you're having a hard time understanding that evolution happened. Let me break it down for you like this. This is a wolf, part of the genus Canis, or canine if you prefer. Its species is a lupus. Now, from this exact same canis, we had everything from a Chihuahua all the way to a Great Dane and even my personal favorite, the Bulldog. But, we don't, also don't just have this one type of wolf. We have the Gray Wolf as well as the Arabian Wolf. Now, all of these are all Canis Lupus uh, species, if you, if you will. And so, we could accept that they're all the same kind. However, let's turn to the coyote. Now, the coyote looks very much like a wolf. Very small changes in order to have a coyote. Very, very small changes, as a matter of fact. Let's call them, I don't know, micro changes. But the wolf is of the Canis lupus variety, which means that its species is lupus. However, the coyote is not. Now, now, they're both Canis, so maybe Canis is where kind comes in, because obviously the coyote and the wolf are very similar. So I guess maybe the genus is the level that we need to look at, seeing as how that they're both Canis. But here's the fox. Now, the fox is not a Canis. As a matter of fact, its genera is of multiple varieties. Here are the red foxes of one particular variety, but there's so many others that it could possibly be. Now let's turn our attention to the bear. Now the bear, if you look at the bear, is very similar to the dog in many aspects. Look at the snout, look at the eyes, look at the build, look at the form. Everything about it is just much bigger. Is there really any difference between a bear and a dog? Okay, okay, so maybe you don't buy that the bear is close enough to the wolf to be considered the same as a dog. Um, you know, they're a different family. All right, let's keep that in mind. So as long as they're in the same family, maybe family is what a kind is. Maybe we can accept that that's the case. All right, moving on. Let's take a look at something else. Let's, let's say if evolution really happened the way that science tells us that it did, that means that we, everything started off in the ocean, eventually became amphibian, or some things became amphibian, which would later become reptile to mammal to here we are. So, can a fish become an amphibian? Ho oh, ho, this is a big issue for, uh, for creationists. You know, they, 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 they point this out very clearly, you know. Oh, no, 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 a fish could never survive out of water. Or could it? Take a look at this. So this is the Piruku. Now, the Piruku is an actual fish that has developed the ability to breathe freaking air 
okay and, and he's not even alone there's actually multiple versions uh, or multiple varieties I should say of, of fish in the Amazon that can breathe air they develop lungs even uh, take a look at the mudskipper the mudskipper is a fish that has this ability uh, then you have this uh, the creature here I mean what else can you call this but a fish with freaking legs they have the ability to breathe it they're called ambulatory fish uh, some of them are actually salamanders but it's hard to tell because they kind of break in between the different lines okay so then there's there's eels what's that really is the difference between an eel and a snake they even have the the, the tiger snake eel um, you know what is the difference and and here's this thing here Oh wait, actually that's a salamander. Sorry, I, I was fooling you just a little bit. So since we've proven that fish can evolve to develop lungs and breathe air, what's to stop salamanders from coming out of the water completely and become reptiles? As we have the uh, ohm or the mud guppy, which retains gills into its adulthood, why, why couldn't it go on to be just lose those gills later on? Is it such a big difference between the I don't know, the zebra tailed lizard or the glass lizard snake slash, I don't know how many times you want to slice that up, or the skink or the chameleon. We call all of these different lizards to be lizards, but is the Gila monster any different than the marbled salamander when we really look at it? Is it that much different than that chihuahua and the Great Dane? Just asking, I mean, seriously, is there that much of a difference between an amphibian and a reptile? I mean, there's even salamanders that breathe through their skin. They don't need lungs or gills. Why are we putting such limitations on this ability to adapt and evolve? Which brings us to primates. All right, so you guys have this big hang-up that humans evolved from an ape-like creature. Well, let's take a look at our closest cousin. Do you really have a hard time understanding that we are the same kind as one of these? Chimpanzees have been seen to use tools. Uh, we've also had bonobos that are actually learning language right now. Uh, we have oran orangutans who have, have been seen to use many human-like features, including uh, using each other together uh, for teamwork and that sort of thing. Uh, it, I really don't understand why you have such a hard time, especially when all of these creatures are under the same family. We're all hominids. The same way that the Neanderthal and, and uh, Homo erectus and everyone else is all under the same family, we're all under the same family. Let's take a look at these pictures here. Are you really telling me that you don't see the similarities? Is it really any different than that Chihuahua and the Great Dane? But hey, don't take my word for it. Think for yourself.